Hi, this video is all about the properties of a rock that allow fluids, by which I mean water, oil or gas, to be stored in rocks and also to be extracted from rocks. These are the properties of porosity and permeability. As we'll see, these are not the same things. It's really important not to confuse the two. Let's start with porosity. Porosity is defined as the amount of void space within a rock. Or to put it another way, the volume of water that can be held or stored within that rock. There are lots of different void spaces within a rock that can be filled with uh, the fluids that we're interested in. These can include bedding planes or laminations, perhaps more frequently things like joints, natural cracks within the rock, cleavages, faults or vesicles. But we can, crucially, get gaps between grains. Clearly this will only occur in a sedimentary rock, but these um, interstitial gaps, these uh, intergrain porosity, is perhaps the most important in terms of storage of fluids in rocks. It is possible to get um, pores within uh, grains within a rock, for example the void spaces in, a, uh, in fossils, but it's the gaps between grains that really is the most important. Porosity then is measured as a percentage, by which I mean of the total volume of the rock, what percentage of that rock is empty, is a space. These can vary tremendously between different types of rock. When we look at these figures, it may surprise you, for example, to see that clay has such a high porosity. As we'll see later though, very often this porosity uh, isn't connected. So although clay can hold a lot of water, very little water may be able to flow through it. These rocks are all, or have different uh, uses within um, extracting fluids uh, for humans to use. All of these are controlled by the size, the sorting, the packing uh, of grains within a rock, as well as other features like joints, for example. Permeability is a different property. Permeability is all about the speed or the rate at which a fluid can flow through a rock. Now this will um, depend a lot on connections between pores. If pores are interconnected, water can flow from one pore to another and we have permeability. If, as in a clay, the pore spaces are individual and are not connected, those rocks can have a high porosity but a very low permeability. Now permeability can have several different measurements. We can talk about the specific yield of a rock, which is the volume of water that we can get out of it, either when it's drained or pumped. Crucially, and perhaps the thing that shows how different permeability is from porosity, is that permeability is measured as a velocity, as a speed. How fast can the fluid pass through that rock? As we'll see, this the speed, this velocity, uh, is proportional to the hydraulic gradient, the steepness of the water table. This graph shows us the relationship between porosity and specific yield. 
and also how much water will actually be held by the rock. So we can see clay, for example, we get uh, on the left hand side of the graph, we get very little um, water from, and it holds most of its water back, even though the porosity is high. Interestingly, it's that some of the lower porosities, perhaps with sand or gravel, well, actually, we'll get most water or other fluids from those rocks. It's a property of surface tension of the fluid with the surfaces of grains within the rock. Now, to measure permeability, or to calculate the permeability, we can use uh, an equation. It's called Darcy's Law, and it states that the, vol the velocity of groundwater flow is equal to um, a property called the hydraulic conductivity of the rock, how good the rock is at letting water or other fluids pass through it, multiplied by the hydraulic gradient, which is the height difference divided by the, the, height difference divided by the distance, and then multiplied again by the cross-sectional area through which the flow occurs. In class, we'll work through some examples of calculating the permeability of a rock. Now, all of this is really focused, well, we, is really focused on extracting groundwater from water-bearing rocks or, or aquifers. We can apply these ideas equally to the extraction of hydrocarbon resources, oil and gas, from deeper down. The examples we're going to look at, though, will relate to groundwater. And this often occurs within the top few hundred metres of the surface. Much deeper than that, it starts to get very expensive to pump water out. If you go really deep, more than two kilometres, the water is not suitable for drinking anyway because of all the dissolved minerals. So, porosity and permeability are different properties of a rock. Ideally, for use as an aquifer, we'll find rocks that have a combination of the two, that allow a high yield of the water from the rock. If we have a, a reasonably high porosity, there's water stored. If we have a high permeability, we can get the water out. Now, don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.